a number of weeks. Obviously, we've constantly uh, worked with Ofqual and we've uh, put challenge, consistent challenge within the system to have reassurance that this is a system that would be work and be fair. Obviously, when we saw the Scottish system and the challenges there, um, working with Ofqual, we wanted to put a more robust and stronger appeal process into the system. That's why we brought forward the triple lock that we uh, put in place before the uh, launch of the exam okay, system. But when did but you first become aware of the problems with the algorithm? Well, it became, uh, it became apparent that there were challenges within the algorithm when uh, we are seeing the results directly uh, coming out. And then over the weekend, um, you know, we'd got concerns before the... Um, when we saw what had happened in Scotland, we wanted to have a more robust system put in place. So, so th but, this weekend, um, so this uh, weekend, we... I mean, that, that, that's just not the case, is it? I mean, the Education Select Committee took evidence back in June about the negative effects that this system would have uh, on disadvantaged students. They published the report in July. Robert Halfin saying there is a risk it will lead to unfair bias and discrimination already ag against already disadvantaged groups. There was modelling showing that 40% of A-level results would be affected by this system in a negative fashion back in July as well. The idea that you are not aware of this until the weekend simply doesn't stand up. Your ignorance is not a defence here. Mr. Williamson. In fact, it appears to be the biggest crime. So, so at every stage, right at the start of our work with Ofqual, the key thing that we have uh, said and been consistent at is that actually children from the most disadvantaged backgrounds, those uh, from ethnic minority backgrounds, mustn't be adversely affected as a result of having moderated grades. And that was something that Ofqual, working with partners, was absolutely clear that uh, in all the actions to ensure that that I'm wouldn't sorry, happen. Education Select but, Committee but was when... warning about this back in July. The idea that this problem has somehow come up and bitten you in the backside it, it is nonsense. You've but... known about this for months. The DfE has, for some reason, been apparently tone deaf to these criticisms. People have been telling you this was exactly where you were heading for months. And instead, we've had five days now, five days of complete uncertainty for some of the most disadvantaged, bright young people in the country. But, but at every stage, both uh, DfE and Ofqual, in terms of the development of a moderated grade system, have actually put the issue of making sure that children from the most disadvantaged backgrounds are at the heart of what it does. But How, when we were... In when what, we were, in sorry, what way is can that I... statement justified, Mr, Mr Williamson, um, given the fact that you've had to perform this massive reverse verdict because some of the most disadvantaged, bright young people in the country have been unfairly treated by this system. How can you maintain that you, you've had them at the heart of everything that you've been doing? Well, what you saw, there was a massive difference, and if you look at the statistics, there was a clear difference in terms of how the system worked in England compared to how it worked in Scotland. But despite the fact that actually we believed that we had a more robust and we had confidence that we had a more robust system than what had been used in Scotland, and there was a similar feeling of confidence by Labour and Lib Dem administrations in Wales and a DUP and Sinn Féin administration in Northern Ireland. What was clear when the results came out and when those were... It was showing up anomalies, it was showing up the fact that children quite clearly hadn't received the grades that they truly deserved. Okay, then okay. we were in a position sure. of looking at the evidence and it was clear that action needed to be taken. Uh, when the evidence was coming in, both from Ofqual, where they had concerns as to what had occurred, and when the evidence was coming in from outside experts, uh, the I mean, right I'll, thing I'll to do again, was Mr. take... Williamson, the evidence has been there for far longer than the period between now and last Thursday. The evidence has been there for months. I just want us to turn to some of the practical consequences consequences uh, of this U-turn. I mean, what now happens to students who can't get into, who, who can now get into their first choice university, who've had to take another place? What, what of all the students for whom there is no place available because of this fiasco? So what we're doing, we've already uh, explained that students that have taken a second choice have the ability to contact their first choice university in order to be able to have a discussion with them to see if they have the ability to move on to that university. Yeah, we're so working. No guarantee we're, of a place at the university that they are now entitled to go to. You're not offering a guarantee. You're talking about a conversation yeah. between a student and a university. I mean, on that on that topic, you know, what are we going to be doing for those poorer so students, I, those without um, English-speaking parents, you know, who don't have the resources that private school students will have to lobby universities in the way that you're describing? And lobbying is what they're going to have to do to get their place.
So there's an expectation that universities will honour the commitments that they've given, but we recognise there's some real challenges in the system. That's why we've moved swiftly to lift the student number cap on terms of uh, uh, number of places that universities are able to offer for students, giving them extra flexibility, giving them extra uh, the, the opportunity to take on more students. We've also set up a task force with the university sector to look at what more actions we can undertake to support them in order to boost their capacity and welcome as many students as possible. We've already seen the largest number of students getting their first choice university already this year. Uh, we're seeing more students going to university than we've ever seen in any year before. But we recognise there's challenges there. That's why we're committed to work with the university sector, help them and support them to make sure we maximise the opportunity for young people this year and in future years as well. You told us last week that you wouldn't be you turning on this. All of these problems were predicted. All of these problems were on your desk. You knew about them. The fact is you had five minutes to sort this mess out. And instead, what we have had are five days of tens of thousands of students being put through needless mental anguish. So when we were in a position of going into results day of Thursday last week, we had every confidence and uh, reassurance that there's a system that was both robust and fair, something that had broad support uh, right across the political spectrum, and it was uh, broadly supported by all those unions and all those bodies that uh, uh, recognised the importance and felt the strong belief that uh, having a system of moderated grades was the right approach. But when it became clear that there were anomalies that weren't going to be able to dealt with by an appeal system, no matter how robust and how extensive that was, we had to take further action. The issue, you know, the issue for me is got to always be about fairness and oh, every Mr. reassurance, the, the every reassurance, is that, every reassurance that we had had was that this was a system that delivered the maximum amount of fairness, both for youngsters and also ensuring the integrity and the value of uh, the grading system. When it became clear that there were just simply too many youngsters that were in a situation where they'd received the grades I, that I mean, weren't I'll a fair reflection of their work... Oh, this sorry, has been can clear I, for a lot longer than you are maintaining. This has been clear for months. This has been absolutely pointed out to you by the Education Select Committee and many, many others that this is what we were saying. Tell me, in what way has your handling of this over the past five days, the past five months, not in and of itself, been a lesson in incompetence? So, so at every stage, and if you you look at uh, people right across their political spectrum, you know, there's a strong belief that going down the route of moderated grades, making sure that there was a standardisation, this wasn't something that was just a view of a Conservative government, this was a view of a, uh, a SNP government in Scotland, a Labour and Lib Dem government in Wales, can answer for their and, own mistakes, and uh, a, a, a DUP in Sinn Féin. Um, and... At the core of it was ensuring that there was fairness across the spectrum for students, uh, whether they're from a poor background or whether they're from uh, an affluent background. There was about a consistency and fairness of approach. When it became clear that actually that wasn't what was being delivered as a result of these moderated grades, it was the right thing to do to take action, and that's what we did. And Mr. Mr. Yes, Williams, of I know you. And, I know you, and, I know you and, to be a man. Of, I know you to. You, you believe yourself to be an, an honourable individual. You know, I, I'm taking no delight in all of this. You know, some journalists, when they see a politician make a mistake, in, instantly scream mendacity. And that's, that's not me. But at the same time, you're an education secretary who has presided over the biggest fiasco in the history of A-levels, who's caused untold mental anguish to tens of thousands of students, again, from the most, some of them from the most deprived backgrounds. You knew about this for months and you didn't do it. I, I'm just wondering why you haven't done the honourable thing and resigned. So, when you say that uh, you raise the issue as to the fact that there were concerns and people legitimately had concerns that children from most disadvantaged backgrounds could potentially be disadvantaged by a standardisation system, that was exactly our concerns as well. And if you look at the data, it quite clearly shows that the actions that we took made a real difference in terms of actually ensuring that those children weren't going to be disadvantaged. But what did become clear, what did become clear that the uh, 
the standardization process that had been worked up uh, and that had been used with the examples was throwing up too many anomalies, too many anomalies that wouldn't be able to dealt, be dealt with by even the mo most robust of appeal systems that could possibly be put in place. When that was clear, we took action and we moved to the fact that there would be teacher-assessed grades or the calculated grades, whichever is highest. And, of course, as I said yesterday, I'm incredibly sorry for the fact that this has caused distress.